there and in today's episode I'm going to be talking all about your sales process. Are you actually maximizing what's in there or are you losing opportunities left, right and center? So to find out how to make more of the opportunities you already have, keep watching. So a lot of the companies I'm dealing with right now have got a sales process and you know what? I love a good process and that is great news. The thing is though, they're wanting to know how to make more with what they've already got. We work really hard to get an opportunity into our sales process. So once it's there, we want to give ourselves the very best chance of success. And I've found that there's a few things that a lot of companies aren't actually doing. The key thing is, it's not enough to just have a process. You actually need to report on it. And the reason for that is because that gives you visibility of what's actually going on inside of the process. Quite often people focus on opportunities moving through a process. And as long as there's opportunities moving through, actually they're quite happy that sooner or later those opportunities are going to drop out the other end and we're going to make our money, which is fantastic. The thing is though, how many of those opportunities do we actually lose along the way? And this is where your reporting becomes important. We need to report on not just the stuff we win, but also the stuff we lose. So what key measurables can you introduce to make more with less? So the first thing you need to look at is where you lose an opportunity. Now this can be really important. In some processes, once an opportunity is lost, the only thing that's tracked is the reason that that opportunity is lost. Now that is important, but it's also important to know where in that process the opportunity dropped out. It's really helpful for you to know if actually you're losing 50% of your opportunities at the point of demo, or are you losing 50% at the point of quote? When is it that you're actually getting people dropping out of the process? And what is the reason that they're giving at each of those points? That's super important because it means that you can actually laser in and look at exactly how you're working in that part of the process and do something about it. Can you improve your demo? Should you look at your quote process? Is it something about the way your sales team are having the conversations at that point? Or is it how you're physically passing that opportunity or lead around your organization or between members of staff? The point is looking at not just why people said no, but when they said no is gonna give you huge insight. So my first tip is to start reporting properly on what you lose. The great thing about this is you can then implement laser focused training to change that result. Now the second thing that you should really be thinking about is looking at what you've won. There's nothing finer than being able to squeeze a little bit more out of the sales that you're making. So what I always suggest to people is that they look at their metrics, their one metrics. This includes things like, how many sales are you closing a month? What is the average value of them? What product it's for? And how long did it take that deal to close? This can be super helpful because it's gonna to start to tell you exactly where you can make a difference. So for example, if your average sales value is a thousand pounds, if you increase that by just 10%, that's gonna significantly transform your sales results across the course of a year. So how could you do that? You could introduce a bolt-on product. You could introduce an opportunity for your salespeople to sell multiple years of something. That's a great way of increasing your average sales value. You could bolt another mini product in there. There's loads of different ideas you can come up with, but thinking about increasing your average sales value is a brilliant way of increasing your overall turnover. If every one of your team did just one more sale every single month, what would that mean for your organization? And what would you need to do to support your salespeople in delivering that result for you? And the other thing to think about is how long it's actually taking leads to move through the sales cycle. Generally speaking, higher value sales will take a bit longer than something at a lower value. So sometimes if you're looking to plug a gap towards the end of a quarter or the end of the month, it's actually only gonna be feasible to move certain types of opportunities through that pipeline quick enough to get you to hit that target. So it's really helpful to know per service or per product how long that sales cycle actually is because that means you can ask for the right support from marketing colleagues to actually generate the right leads for you to drive your target achievement at the end of the period. 
The third thing that I think you should look at is what's stuck. There are always a batch of opportunities that have somehow got stuck in the process. So if you've got stuff that's been sat in your pipeline for a significant period of time, then it's really worthwhile going and looking at those opportunities individually. Why is that? Well, because generally they're the ones that are going to need a little bit of innovative thinking to get them moved along. And often as a sales leader, that's where you can really add some additional value. Equally, it can be a great way to empower your salespeople to finally come to the conclusion that actually something is dead. And if something is dead, it shouldn't be in your pipeline. And if it's not dead, what are they going to do to move it along? So you need to make sure that your reporting is picking up that stuff that's stuck as well. And the last thing that I think you should really be making sure you're picking up is where your opportunities have come from. Because then if you can actually filter back to see what opportunities are closing over what period of time at what value based on where they came from, then you have the additional benefit of now knowing how to generate more business for your company. So if what you're finding is the higher value leads, they're actually all coming through from leads from an event, guess what? You need to go and do more events. Alternatively, it might be that actually you're getting a fantastic result of a particular webinar or a standalone marketing campaign. Brilliant. This means that tying your sales results back into those campaigns will allow you to see which campaigns you should actually rinse and repeat. So it's not just about having a sales process, it's about reporting on it as well. And if you'd like to get access to my tip sheet around this, then you should just click that link below. So until next time, just remember to be sales-tastic.